All right, so today we're gonna to be tying Barry's carp fly on a size six Daiichi 1760 hook. Um, to start, I'm gonna put down some 0 0.025 lead wraps here. Um, I'm gonna put 15 down. This is designed to be a heavy fly, so don't be afraid to um, really, really use some weight with this guy. Next, we're gonna use our dumbbell eyes. And I'm just gonna start a thread base with orange thread. And I wanna tie these back a little bit. I wanna give myself plenty of room in front of the eyes of this hook to, to leave space to finish the fly. So I'm just gonna wrap these in, come back. Do some soft wraps over the lead, and then build a bit of a thread bank back here before I secure everything. I'm gonna come back forward, really wrapping everything down. And then I'm gonna grab some super glue and glue the eyes in here. I'm gonna take my super glue and just put a drop right on the tip of my bob in here, bobkin here and just drown the eyes in glue. Um, and really let that soak in all the way around. Pull it back over the lead a little bit. And just to ensure that the base of this fly is gonna be really secure. Um, and make sure it lasts for more than one fish. I'm gonna come back through, take a couple more wraps over the eyes until I feel like I'm happy with them, perfect. And then I'll move my thread back I want to put somewhat of an orange tail, I guess you could call it, not a tail, just the back of the fly like that under, on the bottom there. So I'm going to wrap back to about the, the barb of the hook and then bring my thread back forward to right behind the point. Next, we are going to grab some a rabbit strip, just in a natural uh, kind of light brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the the rabbit like the fur off of the skin of the strip and we're going to use that as our tail for this fly grab a nice little clump like that i'm just going to tie it in right on top here perfect and then i'm just going to wrap back trying to secure all those extra threads and wrap it back to right about there. That looks good. Perfect. Next, I'm going to wrap my thread maybe about halfway up the fly, and I'm going to grab some black wire. This is in the brassy size. And I'm just gonna tie that in right there on the side here. And work my way back to the rabbit that we just tied in right there. Make sure it's nice and secure. Next, I'm gonna grab a strip of pheno skin. This is in the burnt orange color. And what we will do with this is I'm just gonna, as you can see there, on that side, I cut a little, the side of it off to make it easier to tie to the fly here. So I'm just gonna peel the white paper off here. And the way I wanna tie this is I don't want the shiny side up. So as you can see, that side's more shiny and this side's more dull. I want that dull side to be facing out. So when I tie it in, I'm gonna make sure the shiny side is facing up. And we're gonna invert our fly on this one and tie this in on the bottom here. And really take your time in this step because this is one of the most crucial parts in making this fly look as realistic as possible is centering the pheno skin on the bottom here. And I'm just gonna make sure we have that where we want it. Might have to move it just a little bit. And I'm going to wrap this back 
until we get to that rabbit there. Perfect. Next, we are going to create our dubbing loop here. And again, wrap that back to the front of the rabbit. And don't be afraid if you're building up kind of a bump back there, it'll all get covered up when, uh, when this fly gets closer to being done. Now I'm going to get my thread, pull it out of the way here. I'm going to take my dubbing twister, put it in my loop, let it hang, and spool it there. And now I'm going to get some Angora Goat Dub, and this is in the burnt orange. Uh, you can use really any color. The the idea of this fly is a, some, uh, a crawfish variation, so I like to do it in the oranges or the the really just the orange colors I've found to be most effective with this pattern. And I'm just going to slowly but surely fill it up with this goat dub. Trying to keep it as even as possible in that dubbing loop there. should be good for us there and then I'm just going to pinch it at the bottom, twist it, then release with my fingers and let that thing really twist all the way up for us here. And then I will grab a dubbing brush. And just brush that out. Now we are going to wrap it forward and create <coughs> the, the, the back of the fly or the thorax of the fly, if you will. And as I wrap, I'm going to do my best to pull those fibers back as to not to trap them. And we're just going to work our way up the body of this fly right about to right about to here. You want to leave uh, maybe a bit farther. Leave that thorax section available for the next part of the fly. I like that right about there. Let's see here. Yep. And I'm going to grab my thread and capture the, uh, the, uh, the dubbing loop material here, right on top. Lock it down and then I'm going to nip it off. And I'm just going to pull all of that Angora back and really lock this section in here. Beautiful. Next. I'm going to get my dubbing brush, just brush everything out. Perfect. Now I'm going to take my bobkin and separate that goat dub on the bottom here. Try and pull it to the side like that. So it's all going to be on the top here. I'm going to take my Fino skin and lay it right over the belly, trying to not capture as many as possible here, like that. And then what we're going to do is take our black brassy wire and the best we can wrap it forward over that Angora, do Angora goat. And as you can see, one trick that you could do here is just do a gentle soft wrap over right here just to secure it while we wrap it forward. I'm going to try and make these wraps as even as possible and I'm just going to do my best to kind of pull that goat dub around that wire as to not trap those fibers. And what I want to do is bring that up 
and do my last wrap right there. And what I'll do is actually unsecure that orange thread. I'm gonna pull that goat duck or that pheno skin back so I can secure my wire on the actual fly here and that way it gives it the presentation that you're not even using any wraps on that pheno. Now I'm gonna come back. That looks good. And we'll go back through at the end and make sure we get all those those um, hairs all pulled out from under that wire there. But for now I like it. So next we are going to tie in our hackle feather. You can use a soft hackle, you can use hen, you can really use whatever you want for this fly. Um, in the original pattern, you use a, a grizzly soft hackle. I have found that I like the movement a little bit better when I use some hen. So I'm going to tie in a piece of hen from the tip here. I'm just going to secure that right on top. And wrap that back to right about there. And then we'll use that in a little bit. Next, I'm going to make another dubbing loop. And wrap that back towards that pheno skin. And then come up around the eye and move our thread out of the way. Now I'm going to grab our Angora goat dub again and get ready to make the upper the front half of the fly. So again, same thing, I'm just going to build it up a little bit. You shouldn't need quite as much goat dub in this section because it's a smaller, smaller portion of the fly. So keep that in mind as you fill your dubbing loop up with dubbing. That looks good right about there. Then again, I'm going to pinch it, twist it, and then release and let it spin up. Really letting everything get all secure in there. And then before I wrap it, I'm going to hit it with my dubbing brush and just get all those, those fibers really sticking up. Next, we are going to Wrap this around until we get our dubbing moving for us. And again, I'm just gonna wrap it around the thorax here, trying to pull it back as much as possible and keep from trapping any of those fibers as we move forward. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it around the eyes a few times to cover up that work. And then we will take our thread and secure it right in front of the eye here. All right, we'll nip off that little dubbing loop. Pull that back, take some secure wraps against the eyes. That looks good. And now I'm just gonna brush some of that dub out. Perfect. And now I'm gonna take our hackle or hen that we tied in and the best of my abilities, I'm gonna wrap it forward, trying not to trap any of that goat dubbing as we go. Trying to let it be as exposed as possible. I'm gonna do two wraps back behind the eyes and then work my way in front of the eyes and finish with a wrap right in front here. Let's see here. Right through there. I just want to brush this out a little bit, flare everything up, and then we will capture it right there in front. Try not to do that and let it go, or else you'll have to start over. Bring it forward. Flare out those feathers just a little bit. Pull them back if you need to. And 
And that looks good one more time. And we will secure that right behind the eye. And wrap back towards the eye. I'll just take the scissors up here, and nip off some of this extra stuff that we don't need. Looks good. Now I'm just gonna take my brush, and really separate those feathers. Now I'm gonna go to the bottom of this fly. I'm gonna try and find right about the middle pull them apart here. And I'm going to take my pheno skin and lay it directly over like that. Making sure that we try not to capture any extra fibers in there and then up by the eye of the hook I'm going to pull it back just a bit like that Make sure we have it centered and do a couple wraps to secure it. Now I will come back, nip that extra bit off, and then make our hot head on this fly. Should build up our orange thread a little bit here before we whip finish. Brush it all out and then grab our whip finisher try not to capture any fibers as we finish here pull that guy out and we're done this is the berries carp fly a uh, wonderful fly for for still water and moving water. It's intended to be heavier and it has a very buggy crawfish look to it.